Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. Now, at the bottom of the hour, I'd mentioned tarantulas. Are they good or bad for the gardens? And they're very good. They're good. Mentioned that uh, if you see them, if you see a spider roaming around just in the in the across the street or out there, it's almost guaranteed a boy because they're the only ones that roam around looking for a gal. Gals stick close to their nest. They don't roam around. Boys go after them. They don't go after the boys. So anyway, but javelina also tend to be rather rambunctious this time of year. And, and what they're really trying to do is uh, quite a few things are trying to gain weight before the winter. They're putting on weight. They have a ferocious appetite this time of year. And so you'll find they get into things that maybe they've left alone all spring and summer. All of a sudden, you're, they're eating your potato vine or eating your whatever it is. You're going, wow, what, what, where'd that come from? Well, they're trying to bulk up. And so they're roaming around looking for more food. So they're normal source. They're going, well, this is good, but I also want a few more calories. I think I'll go hit the next door neighbor too. And so they, there's a few plants that they just are not going to bother. I thought I would touch on some of the, the most kind of, kind of bulletproof animal resistant plants. And I, I say resistive uh, because sometimes javelina, especially, they don't necessarily eat them. Sometimes they dig them up just because it's just for fun. They like to dig. Their nose is set up. Their entire, they're like a pig-like animal where they get this nose that turns up the soil looking for roots worms, grubs, that's their protein source in the ground. So sometimes they're they're messing with your gardens, not to mess with the plant, just to see what's underneath at the root level. Uh, so, okay, so I say resistive. So generally speaking, they leave these alone, but not always. Sometimes they get a wild hair and kind of go after things. But uh, one that's, that's probably the, the number one seller, javelina proof plant of all the plants we sell at the garden center. You'll see them in your neighborhood. They're in every neighborhood. It's uh, Lanacea or honeysuckle. So the, the common, the botanical name is Lanacea. The, the uh, common name is honeysuckle. A lot of varieties of honeysuckle. So a lot of colors. So right now in the garden center, I think we've got three, three colors of honeysuckle. Uh, the traditional Hall's honeysuckle. That's the one as a kid used to take out the stamens or the flowers and suck on the nectar. It's really sweet. It's got a real fragrant smell to it. Kind of, kind of a, a lighter Kelly green foliage to it. And it can be a ground cover that just runs up a hill or across a yard, or it can go up a trellis, up a fence. It likes to run and trail. It's got tra tendrils that kind of run around and grabs onto things. So uh, most honeysuckle are that way. But we've also got purple. So the foliage is the same, a little bit deeper green, but the flower is has that same yellow with purple streaks all over it. Thus, the name purple honeysuckle. And there's a lemonade where they kind of combine the two, and so but they're all equally as hardy, equally as tough. If they do, they crawl around as ground covers or up hillsides or or over trellises, pergolas, uh, and they're all javelina proof. I'd say deer proof. I'd say rabbit proof. They're just tough, and they love hot, dry, windy gardens. So that just describes you know, you know, all of the all the landscapes in, in Arizona. We just described them. There you go. It's a good one. It doesn't like the desert. It likes the colder climates. It needs that cold. Another one, I would say mums. Mums are, so they're a beautiful plants. So chrysanthemums, the ones that are famous, they're one of the front patios of, of so many folks with the pumpkin right next door. The javelina will eat the pumpkin, but they're not going to touch the, the, the mums. Personal experience, uh, no matter the color. They seem to leave them alone. I've had a deer eat the flowers off a of mum once, but the javelinas generally leave them alone. I don't know why the deer did that. It probably just got bored. The problem with a deer is it's got, it's like a cow. It's got two stomachs. It's got one that it kind of digests and then it kind of sends it down to the second one for processing. And, and sometimes they're grazing and they'll just eat something bef before they realize, oh yeah, that's right. I don't like this. It makes me feel not so good. So then, then they move on. So. I think Nandina, you folks in California, you know Heavenly Bamboo. That one, it, surprising. It looks delicious. You would think everything would eat it, but nothing does. And so it's just a soft, it looks like a bamboo plant, thus the name Heavenly Bamboo, but it doesn't spread. 
it's not truly a bamboo either. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a Nandina. It's different. So it's, 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 it's a different variety, but it sort of has that structure. That's the name. Uh, but I think that is one of the best plants for raised beds. I grow mine in containers and up along the driveway, a walkway, just out there in the landscape. There's different heights. You go head high, hip high, ankle high. They've got different models that you can plant, but all of them are just bulletproof when it comes to the animals. The one that's most thought of this time of year, especially, uh, everyone comes in and go, I need some lavender, that real blue looking thing. It's a lavender. It's a hip high lavender. Go, oh, you know, lavender doesn't grow that tall. So it's got to be Russian sage. And people go, oh yeah, that's right. Russian sage. That's what it, where are those at? I want that big blue shrub that gets hip high, kind of four foot high, four foot wide. And it blooms from monsoon through the end of the year, through, through let's call it Halloween. And so that is one that anytime you hear the word sage in a plant, you know you got a good plant. If you've got animals, they're not going to eat sage. Animals don't like herbal fragrancy, high, high in oil kind of plants. And so the plants are using that as a defense to keep the animals off of them. So they put these fragrances on. I mean, Russian sage truly is not an herbal plant, but it takes on this characteristic because it knows it's trying to mimic uh, herbs. So it goes, oh, I don't want to be eaten by deer. I don't want javelina to munch on me. So it puts on this smell to it. So, so when you rub the foliage, it has this lavendery, sagey smell to it. But it's a beautiful plant, guaranteed to bloom a long time, and animals aren't going to bother it. I would say the same thing with all the herbs. So, so uh, rosemary, lavender, thyme, uh, they don't bother those. Oregano, javelina, not going to bother those. They don't like herbs because they smell to us they smell wonderful to them they go no that's terrible stuff i'm not doing that so honey so let's see oh ivy yeah, english ivy that's traditionally they're not going to bother those rhododendrons are not going to bother those azalea is not going to bother those wisteria a lot of the plants that you know you grew up with animals don't bother them because of this mechanism they, they either have a sap they don't like or they've got a flavor or a smell uh, they've got a texture sometimes, like echinacea. Uh, this is a beautiful flower. It looks like a miniature sunflower. Uh, animals generally leave that alone because it's got a hairy stem to it. And that's a defense the plant's putting on that to keep the animals off of them. So if they munch on them, they get these hairs stuck in their throat. And they're kind of going, oh, man, I thought it was so it looked so good. Oh, I need some water now. And so that plant has, has trained animals, don't eat this. You're going to need water after this. Just keep moving. Keep moving. So anyway, that's, there's a lot of plants like that. Daylilies, animals, a great perennial flower. They're not going to bother. Carnations, that's one of my favorites. Carnations is an evergreen perennial uh, or, or uh, a carnation. What's the other name? Dianthus or pinks. All those are related plants. They don't bother any of those. Javelina, deer, rabbits, they don't bother any of them. And they've got a long bloom cycle. And the, the, the nice evergreen, typically blue colored foliage. That's another indication of animals are not going to bother it. There's a secretion that plants throw off of them that give them that blue hue. And it's a pure defense mechanism to keep the animals off of them. So it's, it just makes them taste bad. And so when, when animals see that blue color, go, no, no, don't eat that one. That's always, that's never good. Keep moving to look for more greens and yellows, some of the other colors. They don't like that blue color. That's why so many Arizona plants come in a blue hue. Keep the mule deer off and the elk off of them. They kind of go, oh, they're not going to, they're not going to eat uh, oak. They're not going to eat uh, some of these others. Uh, manzanita for native, generally they'll leave those alone. Manzanita has got, a, it's tough as nails. It's got that one with the red bark on it with a nice evergreen foliage. Good, strong plant uh, that, that grows here. One of mine that I use quite a bit of is, is um, lavender cotton or Santalina. It's another herbally plant. It's like, I, I think it actually may be related to herbs. It's got a nice silver color to it. So it's another, another color animals don't eat are silver or, or kind of a gray, real bright gray color. I would say uh, uh, Dusty Miller. Same way. Animals are not going to bother that. So you can mix and match. If you're right out there in the forest, you can mix and match and have, have a nice looking landscape uh, that the animals aren't going to bother. If you've got a bunch of vegetables, you want to 
you want to protect them. There's no vegetable that the animals aren't going to eat. If you like it, they're going to like it. So the only way to keep them out of that is I need a fence. So if you're, you, you have to fence them out. So I've got a javelina resistive list here at the garden center. I'd be glad to share that with you next time you visit. But for now, let's take a break. Be right back. Prescott Blaze Maple is the fastest local tree with brilliant red foliage. Prescott Blaze Maples grow three feet each year. That's fast. Prescott Blaze Maples are perfect for patios or any place a shade tree is needed. We have a limited number of huge, instant Prescott Blaze Maples, but the $249 size is exceptionally nice. The maples are brighter in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Or shop online at top10trees.com. You're listening to local garden expert, Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. 